Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project to bring you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, January 10th, 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Solar activity is quickly declining. Southern California mudslide, 17 dead, others missing. This is in the aftermath of uh, yesterday's report. And it was ongoing today. Rivers of mud and debris ran through parts of Southern California after heavy rainfall. People are have been devastated. Communities devastated. Emergency, emergency personnel work to save people trapped in the mud. Here you see live coverage. The founder of the Catholic school is among the dead. Hundreds of rescuers and dogs continue to search for people Wednesday, slogging through mud and debris. Roy Rother, 84, and his wife, Teresa, were swept from their Montecito home, the headmaster said. Teresa was rescued, and Michael Van Heck, headmaster of St. Augustine Academy in Ventura, was Rother founded in 1994. Authorities have not confirmed the names of the dead. Children are among the victims. Heavy rains early Tuesday caused rivers of mud and debris to run down from hillsides in Santa Barbara, dem demolishing homes in the affluent seaside community of Montecito, weeks after wildfires in the area devastated it. Snow and bitter wind could descend on North Dakota. Snow and wind, bitter cold are descending on North Dakota. Northeastern North Dakota is under blizzard warnings, and the rest of the state is under a weather storm warning and an or advisory. Good news for you in Michigan. Big snow will miss you, but bad news, bitter cold returns. Grand solar minimum much. This is going to be the norm here where we have temperatures going from the mid-50s in the winter down to zero, changing daily temperatures over 50 degrees instantly. Same thing is going to be happening during the spring and summer months, which leads to crop loss and famine. Wacky winter dumps snow on every single U.S. state. I wonder why that's happening. Hmm. Hmm. Guys, did you know all, 2009 was one of the biggest snow seasons in the country? Check out where that is on the graph. We'll be talking about it. Bangladesh hit by the coldest temperatures ever. Here it comes. January 10th, this is coming out. Severe cold wave engulfed Bangladesh this week with record-breaking lows. The coldest the country has ever seen since record-keeping started in 1948. Twelve people, including six children, died of cold-related ailments in just four days. Heads up, India. West Bengal. Notches sub minus 12 record. Alipur, this is coming out of the city, is experiencing the longest spell of sub minus 12 degree temperatures in 15 years. Back to 2003. Avalanche of exceptional magnitude cuts off Bon Sur Arc with 23 feet deep of snow. We reported on this yesterday about extreme weather in the Alps. Here's everything you need to know coming from the Telegraph. The chic Swiss resort of Zermatt was among the worst hit, with 13,000 tourists become stranded when the rail line that provides access to the resort was closed due to the extreme conditions and level 5 avalanche risk. That's the highest level, guys. That's how bad the situation is. Many skiers and snowboarders in the mountain are reporting unprecedented conditions across the Alps. Zermatt alone reported 200 centimeters of new snow in 36 hours from Sunday and Monday. The adverse weather has caused avalanche risk in Zermatt and surrounding area to reach maximum 5 out of 5 for the first time since 2009. And that is a solar minimum boom going into the eddy minimum, which is a grand solar minimum super boom. And that is a boom to news. Let's go back to this breaking right now. Avalanche of exceptional magnitude. Not only did the 13,000 people get stranded, but this just occurred. Following the record snowfall after the last few days, the village of Bonneval sur Arc, located in Sawa, Department of the Alps, was cut off from the rest of the world after a massive avalanche on January 8th covered the road, leading to the village with up to 23 feet of snow. And that is a grand solar minimum boom. Need I say more? Major 7.6 earthquake we covered yesterday. Thankfully, only 
uh, resulted in small tsunamis. Guys, the, the water draining here in Belize is because of the coming small tsunami. So they had a low tide, they had a drawdown because of the tsunami, and then a small 6 to 10 inch tsunami in most places. So any place there was a drawdown in this area, that was because of the tsunami warning and the small tsunami. Let's talk about seismic update. Not, no quakes of note other than the large one uh, yesterday and the after associated aftershocks. Uh, we have the normal moderate range 5.1 in Japan out here in the mid-ocean ridge. We have a 5.0 in the Pacific rise. Series of quakes occurring here in New Caledonia, including a 5.1. Small cluster of quakes up here in Cal Northern California, 3.1 being the largest. And the planetary candex has dropped back down to zero. You're all currently psychic. And that means that another large quake could pop off at any moment. That's a heads up. Ashes from the Russian volcano reached the stratosphere yesterday. We reported on this. This is Shivalush. We have video. Yesterday, all I had was a jiffy to share. Today we have the video. Now luckily there was someone nearby when this was erupting, which is why we have this great footage. This is a 3,000 meter volcano shooting ash about 2,000 feet into the stratosphere. Now the stratospheric boundary is around 30,000 feet above sea level, but that changes depending on the topography. But what we do know is the last two small burps from Chivalouche have both sent aerosols into the stratosphere. Now, during grand minimums, when cosmic ray flux is causing increased cloud nucleation, adding more aerosols to the mix only makes the cooling quicker. These are small samplings of what is to come. Just a taste. This is a very remote area. I will leave you links. So you can watch the video. It's very thorough. PNG Volcano. This is Cadavar. Authorities are to resettle the 2,000 evacuees on this island. Now, Papua New Guinea government said it had and will resettle the 2,000 people displaced after the long dormant Cadavar began erupting last week. The 365-meter-tall volcano has been spewing out huge amounts of smoke and ash, contaminating water sources and destroying the local community food gardens. That means no one could live there. Guys, if this blows, this whole island's going to explode and include with it some seawater, which is going to be epic and could blow up to VEI 6 or 7. There's very little known about this except that it is ready to go. That's a heads up. This could be the one that takes us to the year without the summer, and that may be next year. We'll be watching it. Worldwide volcano news update for the today. For today. Popocatapetl, there's a new volcanic ash emission observed. Also, Santa Huito Volcano and Chivalouche, we just showed you. That's a new name to the list. Let's get to Rattlesnake Ridge. I've got some great coverage from a geologist that is getting inside the emergency management area there. And there was an announcement today. Emergency management hold a media briefing on the Rattlesnake Ridge area today. And what's coming out is as cracks along the ridge continue to get bigger, officials know that parts of it are going to collapse. The question is when. On Wednesday, the Office of Emergency Management held a media briefing at their headquarters in Union Gap. They say they are working on uh, getting information out. The projections of a timeline for what would happen keep changing. It could either be immediately or any or all the way till March. Bottom lines, this landscape, this landslide could happen at any time. It could be tomorrow. It might not happen till March. We've noticed that the landslide is accelerating and accelerating at a lower rate, moving 1.6 feet per week. This is a plan view from the top here. They're suggesting it's going to slide into the quarry. This is one camp. I'm going to share with you our camp. So let's quick look at the cross section here. This is the quarry floor and we're looking at from the road in the Yakima River. This is what they believe is happening. There's a fractured basalt fault here in the subsurface here where the white line is. There are other fractness weakness areas where the red dotted lines are and they think that this mass is going to slide out here. Uh, now that being said, we have actual footage from less than 24 hours ago where they can see new west face failure surface cracks here 
here and here, a deformation stack of shearing occurring here. These are big fissures that are spreading as we speak. Shear stress fracture here from the moisture. Um, and here we can see some more shearing in this area with associated array of anastomosing cracks here. Look at the size of the crack in this area. This is, looks like a sheeted dike. So this is twisting counterclockwise as well as shearing to the right. So it could be a catastrophic spinner that comes straight down into the river. I think it's going to be a blend of both and split off in two directions. Clearly what I'm seeing is a major unit going right here above the west failure surface and this lower unit sloughing off down into Thorpe Road and clogging the river. So this is going to be a multi-part slide. The upper right portion will go into the quarry and I believe that this lower block will slide right off into Thorpe Road. That's my assessment, which brings two camps together in one prediction. So both people will be happy, but no one will be happy when it slides. Now, coming off the Australian today, we have some good news for the informed Australians. Weather station sites compromise climate data. Excellent reporting here. Uh, I want to leave this. You should all read this. This will bring, this brings a little shimmer of hope where they are exposing the lies at the Bureau of Meteorology. Graham Lloyd is right to say it's hard to maintain perspective on climate change when they're changing the weather stations to warmer areas. No weather station sites have stayed the same, head of climate monitoring, ignores the changing to automatic weather stations and small screens caused by observable temperature increase across Australia. Also ignored is the urban encroachment effect. It's farcical to claim temperature trends, extremes, and trends in extremes are due to the climate when the change in data overwhelmingly reflects the changes in the sites and the instruments. So global warming is the position of the thermometers changing and the people reading the instruments, not the climate. The polar extreme dilemma posed by Lloyd happens every solar grand minima. Sunspot activity is very similar to this part of the century as it was in the 18th and 19th centuries when previous grand solar minima occurred, like the Dalton minimum and the Maunder minimum. Then resulting in famines were ignored blatantly on the fantasy of human overpopulation. Today, those who ignore past history also blame humans for the new fantasy of climate change. We know better on our channel, and that's why we're here giving this information to the public because it needs to be said. Carbon dioxide is not causing the temperature to warm. The fraudulent people that are moving the thermometers to warmer places are causing it to warm, Graham Lloyd says. Australia has no politicians or business leaders with the guts to call the climate change hysteria for the rubbish that it is. Having saddled the people with stupid policies on renewable energy and sent the country to the wall. They now think it's a good idea to participate in a scam where people will make money buying and selling credits for a harmless trace gas that is essential to all life on the planet and thereby impoverish us further. <laughs> and that is the, the truth. Guys, you want the truth? You're from the UK? You guys need to check out the Starman. He has excellent grand solar minimum forecasting. He knows his plasma physics. He knows about the sun. He knows about solar cycles. He knows about the coming ice age and Rolf Wishy. <laughs> He's very hard to pronounce. But I want you to come over here and subscribe to his channel. He needs to have 1,000 subscribers by the end of the week. So let's get him up to 500 tonight. I'll leave you links in the description box. Click where it says show more under Oppenheimer Ranch and then subscribe to The Star Man. Please, and if you're from the UK, this is your number one weather resource. Um, he follows Pierce Corbin. He knows how to watch the sun. This guy is on point. His name is, real name is David Birch. I hope he doesn't tell me that. You can find him on Twitter. He's all over the place. This is in, terrible that he only has 289 subs. It needs to be 2,890. This man is, this channel is filled with the truth. And I think you should all come over and subscribe to his page and give him some support. Watch some of his work. He's been spending a lot of time on this. I'd really appreciate that, and that would be a big boom to news, real news, coming from the star man. 
Guys, if you haven't, don't know now. Solar activity is dec declining. This is current. The next two cycles predicted. <coughs> according to Zarkova and the heartbeat of the sun, are going to be cycle 25, 26, 27, respectively, all lower than any amplitude during the Dalton and Maunder minimum. This is just based on spectral analysis of the flipping magnetic field of the sun and the double dynamo. This does not incorporate all of the GISP-2 data. This is just a mathematical model saying the next 100 years are going to suck. If you add that into the information that I know on paleoclimates, the information, Milankovitch information, John Casey's information, at least the next 50 years you need to be preparing for. They're going to be unprecedented, catastrophic environmental change globally will result in crop loss, famine, and the collapse of the empire as it has time immemorial on a two, four, six, and 800 year periodicity. Every 800 years, the grand minima seems to be extremely bad. The mini ice age started 800 years ago. We're going into the modern ice age via the eddy minimum. And in your lifetime, it will never be warmer than it is today. Now, that being said, as we descend into the next glacial period, there are still seasons. The temperature fluctuates by only a few degrees. So when you walk outside, instead of it being 87 on a summer afternoon, it may be 84. You will not notice the difference. The empire will collapse while you're waiting to notice the difference. It doesn't work like that. You will not notice anything except record cold, record snows, strange, extreme climatic events unfolding before your very eyes, and the empire will fall before you know it. If an EMP comes off the sun, it will be too late to prepare. It will be over in a matter of hours. The grid will fry. If it's a financial collapse or a major earthquake that causes the financial collapse and you're not prepared, You'll have less than 24 hours to buy up all the remaining supplies in the stores. There will be no more shipments. The truth is hard to swallow. But proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when this shit hits the fan. And it's about to hit the fan. You may have a year. You may have three years. You may have 13 years. But you probably don't. Be safe, everybody.